Hi there! In this video, I will show you some common and more uncommon examples of fluorescence and also tell a little about how it works. Some of the first materials to be investigated by scientists for their fluorescence were quinine and uranium glass. Quinine fluoresces blue and uranium glass green, so can I offer you a drink? In my opinion, this looks awesome and tastes awful, but it is drinkable. Later, some very powerful fluorescent dyes were discovered. Let me show you fluorescein and rhodamine B. But why do they glow? Here is the simplified explanation. Imagine this is the atomic nucleus and this is one of the electrons going around it. The electron goes around in a normal energy orbit called its ground state, but in some cases it can be pushed out to an orbit with higher energy. In all examples in this video, that push is done by ultraviolet light from a black light. When the electron is hit by a photon of UV light with the exact right amount of energy, the photon and all of its energy is absorbed by the electron. The electron is pushed out in a higher orbit by this energy transfer. But the electron doesn't want to stay in this excited state, so it falls back to its ground state by emitting a photon of visible light. But where did the difference in energy between the two photons go? I'll explain this later, but now for some more examples of fluorescence in our daily lives. Most obvious are the fluorescent tubes used for lighting. I have three examples here. The coating on the inside of these tubes fluoresces when hit by UV light from the mercury vapor inside the tube. With poor efficiency, a black light can also make them light up. Your white clothes also looks really white because of fluorescent dyes. Laundry detergents for whitewash also contain fluorescent materials to keep your clothes shiny white. To the left is the detergent for whitewash. Boom! That's bright! Another example of fluorescent clothing is a safety vest that makes you more visible when trying to survive in traffic or under a hunt. Alright, let's take a closer look at how the electron turns high energy photons into lower energy photons. There are actually sublevels in these two states. So when the electron is pushed out in the excited state, it goes down through some sublevels in what is known as vibrational relaxation. It basically heats up its surroundings. After releasing a little heat energy, it makes a larger jump into ground state by releasing energy in form of a photon of visible light. Enough of the theory. Here are some examples where the fluorescence is just for the fun and fascination of it. Next up, I will try to show how neodymium ions can fluoresce to change color. Here on the fluorescent light, there are greenish and light blue colors, but on the daylight, all are shades of pink, violet or purple. One more time, the effect is striking in real life, but a little vague on camera. The three color changing samples are neodymium fluoride, neodymium chloride and glass with neodymium oxide. I like this color change so much that I bought a large sample of neodymium glass. I guess I'm not the only one that likes these because they are collectibles. Did you know that the screen you are watching this video on also uses fluorescent materials? Terbium and europium are used in most screens to produce colors. This is the yellow green terbium fluorescence. And this is the red europium fluorescence. Old CRT TVs also fluoresces on the UV light, although they are designed to be activated by an electron beam. Finally, I have my favorite fluorescent samples. Mother Nature knows how to disco.
Alright, that's all for now. Lots of info in the description under the video. I am considering making a video about phosphorescence. Press like if you think I should do it.